Good morning. Jesus heals the man born blind by taking some dirt and spitting in it and making a paste of mud. And he smears that paste of dirt and saliva on the man's eyes. It's kind of striking and earthy and maybe a little gross. Yeah? So it, it got me thinking this week. So I went out and got some dirt and I spit an awful lot. Uh, and so I have this little bit here. There's a couple more jars in the narthex next to the Anglican rosaries. Um, you're welcome to take some home. If your knee's bothering you, you can just like rub it on a little bit or your hip. Uh, if you got a little like sore tooth, you can just kind of like stick it in there. I'm just kidding about the knee. Um, it's also just water, don't worry. Um, but can you imagine if Jesus always healed like this? If Jesus, Jesus' thing was he just went around taking dirt and spitting in it and smearing it on people so that when he uh, healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law and she had that fever, if he smeared the spit and dirt on her forehead to heal her and when the little girl who was 12 years old if instead of taking her by the hand he smeared some mud on her or when the paralyzed man was let down through the roof he took some mud and he wiped it on his back if, if this was just how Jesus healed what would we be doing in church every single Sunday We'd be smearing people in mud. I mean, I mean, Jesus teaches his disciples the Lord's Prayer. We say it every Sunday, right? Jesus says, take bread and take wine and do this in remembrance of me. We do it every single Sunday. If this was just the way that Jesus healed every time, this is what we would do. We'd make mud. And we'd smear it on people. I also think Christians, uh, we would argue about the right way to do it. Uh, just because we have to argue about everything in the right way to do it. Just like the Pharisees were arguing in the gospel lesson, right? The, the Baptists would be like, you got to dunk them in the mud. And the Methodists would be like, you got to sprinkle them with the mud. <laughs> Episcopalians, we would have a nice sterling silver bowl. <laughs> we would have a Latin name. And we'd have an acolyte who would just carry around the mud, right? We'd all, we'd all do it differently and, and claim this was the right way to do it. Um, which I think is part of the point of what Jesus is saying here. Jesus does not heal just one way. He heals in myriad ways. In fact, it's hard to find him heal two people the same way. This guy, he makes some mud. There's a, another guy who's uh, deaf and mute. He sticks his fingers in his ears and he spits on his finger and puts it on his tongue and says, F -a -a, be opened. And he's healed. He goes to the little girl and he takes her by the hand and he says, Talitha Kum, little girl, get up. The man who's let down uh, on the pallet through the ceiling, he says, your sins have been freed. Go uh, to the, the centurion who comes to him with his servant at the point of death. A servant is not there. He's at some distance. Jesus says, when you go back home, you're going to find him well. Sometimes he heals closely. Sometimes he touches the person. Sometimes he heals people from a far way away. Sometimes he says, Ephatha. Sometimes he says, Talitha Kum. Sometimes he says, your sins have been forgiven. Every time he heals, he does, does it differently. It's like Jesus goes out of his way to not do it the same way every time. And I think part of that is because if he did it the same way all the time, then we would like pick up on that and we would, we would turn that into a formula, right? We'd have books that, that say the right way to make the mud and the right way to apply the mud and we'd have arguments about that. Part of the thing that I think Jesus does here and the gospel authors do here in showing that Jesus does it differently every time 
is that there is no one right way to do this. There is no one right way that God brings about healing. There is no one right way that people come to faith. I think another uh, great example of this uh, are sort of the, the twin pillars of the New Testament, Peter and Paul. Peter uh, is called out of his job. He's fishing. And Jesus says, come follow me. He does. He follows him for three years. He has uh, quite literally a front row seat to Jesus's ministry. Uh, he's there for every teaching. He's there for every miracle. This three years. And at the end of those three years, we see that he's not like done. Because on the night that Jesus is betrayed and arrested, Peter's like, I don't even know this guy. Who? Jesus who? Three years he was with him. And he still hadn't fully been brought into the faith. Paul, Paul's riding on his horse. Bam! He sees a, a flash of light. He falls off the horse and he's done. He goes from a persecutor of Christians to the, the chief spreader of Christianity through the Gentile world. In one flash. Peter takes three years of like this slow boil. And Paul is a flash in the pan. Well, which one's right? Which one's better? Uh, do, do we have to follow faith like Peter or do we have to follow faith like Paul? There, there is no right way. Some of us have dramatic experiences that, and our life has changed in a moment. And some of us, well, we just always came to Sunday school. And we always sit in church, and slowly that faith is ground into our hearts and souls and lives. There is no one way to catch this faith, this grace, this love. It just matters that we catch it. The second thing I get out of this myriad ways that Jesus heals is that when Jesus comes upon a person, he doesn't just see them as a nameless, faceless person, random person, and they just get the formula. They get the mud, they get the spit, they get the smear. Next, mud, spit, smear, right? Every person he approaches as an individual. Oh, this girl, I'm going to take her by the hand and say, get up. This person, I'm going to say, your faith has made you well. This person, I'm able to heal at a great distance. And this guy, the man born blind, gets a little smear of mud on his eyes. Each person that comes to him, which eat with each of their individual hurts and problems, are seen not just as random person number two, but as an individual who is known and loved. Each of us uh, come to church here. If we, if we had time, we could go around and we could say, why are you here? And we would all have different reasons about why we're here this morning. We would all have different stories about our lives of faith that brought us to this point. Sometimes those stories will look like Peter's. Sometimes those stories will sound like Paul. Sometimes they'll sound like something else entirely. If we then went around again and we said, what are the ways that God has used you to minister to other people? Again, we would have a myriad of stories. And we each come here today with our own stuff. We may not have brought in a bag with us, but it's like we have a bag of stuff. The things that weigh our heart down, the things that keep us awake at night, the things that we're worried about, the things that we're sad about, the things that we're angry about. And Jesus meets each of us where we are and as who we are. Jesus sees you and your face and your name. And he loves you, not just in like a general, random, 
way. But he sees and loves you in a specific way. Like the little girl. Like the man let down. And like the guy who was born blind. And however he meets us, we can still say, I once was blind, but now I see. Do you see? Amen.